Call this meeting to order with the board and guests. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> yes, I can supervisor Clark. Present. Treasurer Fido was here. Trustee Bowen. Here. Trustee Brewer. Present. Trustee Cuscarella. Present. Trustee Mojica. Here. You have a quorum, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, I move to adjust the agenda and move the manager's report to below um, committee of the whole continued. But we do it at the last rather than when we have so much before us. Is there a second? Support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. With that, Connie. Oh, excuse me. First public comment. Public comment. Anyone here to speak on any item on or off the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seeing none. No, no there is some. He have his ear. Needs to go. Would you like to go to the mic? I'm David Howell, live at 9487 Guinea Road. Um, I can tell from looking at the agenda that a tremendous amount of work has gone into the fiscal year 2025 budget. Um, but a couple of things stand out to me. Um, one of them is that nine and a half percent increase in the sewage fees. Um, in addition to that, a 3% increase in the water fees. And in addition to that, a 62% increase uh, in property taxes. Um, you add up those numbers there, it comes to almost 20%. Um, and that, that doesn't even count, um, you know, an average family dealing with the, the price increases for food and energy and, and housing. So I'm not sure that the budget as proposed is sustainable for most of the people in Delta Township. I also have a question, and I don't know if anyone can answer this or if I should talk to someone in the engineering department, but in terms of uh, revenues for the water department, um, is it being factored in in terms of the water that the Ultium 3 plant is going to be using? Um, are they using their own well to bring up the water, or are they going to be getting the water from the Delta Township water tower? And if so, um, I'm curious as to whether or not that was factored in, because if you've looked at some of the media reports, there are some doubts in the media on whether or not uh, that plan is ever going to get up to full production. Um, I also had a question about the 18% increase in life, health, and disability insurance premiums um, for the employees here. And that's quite a large increase. And I'm just wondering if you're locked into one provider or if you have flexibility to you know, to, uh, to put out bids um, with other life insurance providers, and finally, um, the uh, projected amount that the township is going to be paying a year for the bank intercounty drain project um, in the paperwork, it's set at five hundred thousand. Um, if you take the sixty million uh, estimated cost of the project over thirty years, subtract five million which is the state's input, you have 55 million, 95% of that is gonna be um, Eaton County Slant Delta Township, which comes to $52.25 million. If you divide uh, Delta Township's public benefit assessment is 25% of that. So 
it actually comes out to around four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars a year. So um, so it looks to me like the five hundred thousand that's being budgeted, you know, has has quite a cushion. So uh, I just hope that, you know, in, in time, if you have time to go through and pick through the budget, um, just, you know, consider it from a, you know, from an average citizen in Delta Township standpoint in terms of uh, these budgetary increases, because uh, it's probably pretty rare that anybody has a, a 20, 25%, you know, wage increase in a year. And they may also be dealing with the three mil increase um, from Eaton County uh, if that if that passes uh, in November. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Others for public comment? Seeing none. Um, <clears throat> Connie. Oh, um, I thought he... you do have a comment. OK. Um, so you have received questions from board members and you've done responses. So is there anything that you would like to elaborate on before? Did you want to say something first? Uh, no, actually. But you don't? I, that was, I was just going to introduce myself. I think everyone here knows me. I'm Brandon Haskell, Eaton County Commissioner, District 4, uh, just uh, east of here. Um, I understand that the questions have been answered and submitted back, so everyone has had a chance to see those, correct? Okay, um, and then we have Connie, uh, Melissa, and Ben here from Eaton County staff that would be happy to elaborate in, more on any of the questions you might have. Thanks. Thank you. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for last week inviting us here today um, and those of you who attended the town hall. Um, I think probably the largest question that this board has is in relationship to the Delta police contract. That That's really the biggest Thing that we share um, and it's the most positive thing I think for all of Eaton County residents and I think I said it at a couple board meetings um, Delta Township is in Eaton County and Eaton County residents utilize Delta Township so we're all clear on that we're all the same um, with, re with respect to the contract and in terms of the cost yes the MERS pension costs have gone up as the gentleman spoke before, related to costs of, of doing business and paying for wage increases and benefits, they go up. Eaton County has been unique in relationship to MERS, just given the fact that we had a large benefit. I think most of you know it was a 3.2% multiplier. That was the highest. That was for police services, which is where the costs hit you. We reduced that to a 2 and we've reduced all other employees as well to it too. And I think that shows that we're making strides. The difficulty is the county cannot change what MERS does with their valuations toward the cost of the pension. We're forced to pay what they tell us to pay. So the big question, if I were you sitting here, that I would ask is, what is the county going to do? And we did get this question, but I would have asked it anyway. What is the county going to do to make things better if we have a police services contract and this three mills go through? I can tell you under administration and from conversations that I've had with your township manager that we would look at making strides to improve what we're funding. If, if I had a million dollars every year, we would have been putting money toward the pension. For you, it's applicable and most important that we would apply it to the sheriff command and sheriff non-supervisory unit. So that's a commitment that I would make. Now I have three board members who might not be happy with the fact that I said that, but I would commit to working on that because that's fiscally responsible for all of us. If we're gonna get money, we should be paying toward our pension obligation. And we also want the state to make changes. So that's the commitment. The benefit has always been, I think, positive for the county since I've been here. I came here in 88. I know the contract was here in 83. I know that your township manager and I would be um, working on this contract together. It would be the first time. So you've got a fresh set of eyes. We both looked at it already. We both have ideas. Um, one of the things I can say again to my board members, don't listen. 
Um, but you have positions that you pay for that are 100% paid for by the township. Mm -hmm. That result, that was the result of the need for addition, additional positions mm -hmm. several years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've kept those in as 100%. Mm -hmm. um, does it need to be that way today? Yes. Would it need to be that way if this three mil went through, three mils went through? Not necessarily. Can I say that a board would make that change? I can't. Can I say that your board would come to me and say, make that change? I'm pretty certain you would. So the commitment from people standing here is to make sure that we can come up with a contract that suits what you need and what we need because we're a team, right? So that's the goal. I think that's the largest thing and the biggest problem that I think we have when we're talking about this, this millage is the fact that you wanna know what you're gonna get. We've had a great relationship over the years. You don't wanna go out for creating your own police force or trying to contract with anyone else. We don't want you to do that either. And we have a good system in place. Our sheriff's deputies are top notch command the sheriff's committed to Delta Township. So that's the thing that I wanted to make sure we talked about here that I talked about here. If you have questions related to anything um, additional that we responded to, if it's simple, we can answer it here. If it's not, we can provide more information. The other thing that we're going to do, if it's okay with you, we wanna post the questions that you asked us on our FAQ page so that not only your residents, but all of Eaton County understand what your concerns are. You can do the same. You could post that on yours so your residents know that you're specifically looking at their interests. So I don't know if you have other questions. I don't know if the two of you don't talk long, if you have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you have other questions that you wanna ask right now, does anyone have an additional question? <clears throat> one. Andrea. Um, I don't actually have a question, but just a comment. One, I want to thank you um, for the responses. I think really helpful because there have been, I know I've been receiving a lot of questions from members of the community. So, um, you know, I was conveying questions. I was receiving questions I had and wasn't seeing answers to mm -hmm. um, to help inform our residents, folks are trying to make decisions about yes. these, you know, they're important decisions and it's really helpful. And I appreciate the kind of transparency and adding those to the, your FA, um, FAQ page just to help because we, I, you know, and I imagine for my colleagues on the board, they've been getting questions as well. And that's kind of what's generated a lot of, uh, of what they submitted. So I think that's really helpful and, and appreciate, um, your comments this evening and um, again, all the work that was put into to help answer questions that we post in advance. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, um, Brian, our contract was extended for a year. Our Delta Gold contract, <clears throat> when is that up? 9-30-25. I'm sorry, what? Um, September 30 of 25. So a year from now. Correct. Right. Okay. So if the millage passes, you'll have time to assess what the finances that you have, the revenues you have, and be able to come to us and we'd be able to sit down and negotiate a new contract. Yes. Based on those increased revenues. Yes. If, if the millage yeah. fails, you will have time to assess what your budget is and what sort of cutbacks you'll have to make. And you'll be able to come to the township and would have uh, an opportunity to negotiate our contract based on that circumstance. Is that correct? Yes. Now we said it before, if the millage does not pass for administration and discussion with board members, our board chair um, and the sheriff, we would have no ability to have a contract. So we're giving you $4 million. We're getting a credit of $2 million for the 5.5 SEV credit. So it's $6 million we're giving you. You're saying you would, you would just take that $2 million and say, we don't want your $4 million and we're gonna go ahead and lay off Delta Patrol well, sheriffs. Can I, 
my butt in. <laughs> Sorry. You don't say anything incorrect. <laughs> so I'd like to correct that um, misinterpretation. Um, so we do not receive $6 million from Delta Township for the police services contract. We only receive $4 million from that contract. That is what is in the negotiated contract. That's the monthly, or that's annualized through the uh, contract. And monthly, you pay $340,000 on that. So that is the contract amount. The SEV credit that you're talking about is actually a reduction in the contract total price. So we look at it and say, hey, you know, Delta Township is a large part of Eaton County. So because of that, we would likely have some sort of presence here. So we're going to reduce the total that Delta Township owes for that. So the total cost of the Delta Township contract for the department cost is 5.6 million. So that's where those two totals come from. So we're reducing it by the $2 million for that credit, which is 36% this year. So that's where those two numbers come from. It would only be, unfortunately, we're not going to do the Delta Township contract anymore. We would reduce our revenues by the $4.8 million, $4 million. And then we would also reduce our expenses. What I don't want to get into details here because um, these are discussions we have offline, but I appreciate your your myopic viewpoint of that it's your revenue, even though it's coming from Delta Township as an SEV credit, uh, as well as all the other revenue that is uh, allocated out to the other general funded departments as well. I understand that. But we would still have an opportunity to pay you $4 million or more for a Delta Patrol if you desired, if it were failed. But we can have those discussions based on whatever the outcome of the election is. Thank you very much. I'm fine, Madam Clerk. 4.08 plus 2.05 still does not equal 5.61. Can you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a, uh, a there is a formula on our, in our budget, mm -hmm. um, and I have it right in front of me right now. I'd be happy to go through that line by line with you. Um, but a big portion of that is a 15% fee. So there's a support service fee for it. And so that's, that's part for, of the 2.05 million? Um, the 2.05 million is the reduction of the total. So we end up with 5.6 as the total departmental costs, and then we reduce it by the two million. So you're not paying the two million, okay? Because then we add back in the um, non-formulary officers. So the four million covers that administrative fee. Correct. Okay, I see now. Okay, and the other question I have is: Does does the county have a specific ask of this board, or are you simply here to inform us about? the tax uh, limitations just here to inform you okay i i believe the county at one of the other meetings indicated they would were hoping that we would vote to support the millage but we that's haven't so, discussed that that's those of us who are actually elected as staff they aren't entitled to argue right. with my argument. i said in my comments last week that we would certainly appreciate your vote in November, but we would also appreciate your support. Right. Thank you. Andrea. If I may ask one question. Um, Thanks, Joe. I know I had posed just asking and trying to understand because it was shared the three mil increase if that full amount was exercised would be additional 12 million annually for the county. And I'm just trying to understand, to what those needs were. Um, and I know it escalates with the MERS obligations. Um, and I don't recall, but I was, and I apologize, I was in meetings all day, so I only had a few minutes before to review it's your comment. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I know... There, I think it was about seven million in some of the other costs, infrastructure, or technology, and then some of your infrastructure needs. I don't recall what MERS was, but 
it sounds like there's pretty much an immediate need for the 12 million in my that that is correct yeah so i, I realize and in, in, as staff and and even for those who are elected officials those are annual decisions i can't make you know commit kind of what future boards will decide each year but um is i just wanted to make sure my kind of estimation was I think probably the needs exceed the 12 yes, million. That's true. So if when we do our budget recommend, recommendation, just like your township manager does, he's going to tell you what the needs are. So when we as staff go to the board with the budget, we're going to say we need the 12 million. That, that means the board would levy the three. It is up to, and we have a 15 member board to make that decision. So as staff, we're going to do what's fiscally responsible and to start, it's definitely going to be to ask them to love you the full three. I appreciate that clarity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Linda, did you have a question? No, I don't. They answered my questions via email. You're Thank right. you. I'm good. They, they answer all mine too. Okay. Brian, do you have a question? You're not. Thank right. you very much. Thank you for having appreciate us. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. That moves us to our budget. Mm -hmm. And is Courtney presenting? Mm -hmm. You're presenting? Courtney will be. Thank you. On. It says it's on. <laughs> no, I, I can see mine. So yeah. if you guys can see it, we can hear see this. Okay. Yeah, we can see ours. The audience can't see it. Yeah. Telling me it's busy. <laughs> the bus didn't move here. Okay. <laughs> it should it should fire up here and just. While we're waiting, yeah, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to what the gentleman in public comment said about the 6.2 increase in taxable value, that's market value going up and taxable value adjusted for market value of property prices. Is that correct? So if you didn't sell, purchase, if you didn't purchase your home and you just get your bill like you get every year, your bill went up 5%. Our taxable value of the township went up 6.2% because of addition and new growth. So yeah, the homeowners only went up homeowners businesses five percent. But that's not something the township levied or changed. No, that's right? statewide. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Statewide. Yeah. So just for information. Yeah. So because of, of new girls, it really went up for us mm -hmm. over six percent. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want me to go ahead or I think I think go oh, ahead. Go. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you. Um welcome. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's already. I think my fourth, fifth uh, budget presentation, Courtney Nichols, finance director, deputy treasurer. So we'll just review our uh, recommendations for fiscal year 2025. And I can address as we go along the, the citizen comments um, without any issue, I wrote them down. So we prepare this in accordance with the Michigan Uniform Accounting and Budgeting Act. Um, also with it keeping in mind the township strategic plan, continuing to provide high quality service to our residents and doing those things that keep Delta Township an excellent place to live, work, and play. Some of the general goals and priorities for 2025 include planning for future capital infrastructure needs, which it seems like we're always doing and we will continue to do. Maintaining excellent water and sewer services, continuing to fund our OPEB liabilities and our pension liabilities. There we go. And um, addressing, like I said, goals in the strategic plan and your board policy of maintaining 50% unassigned fund balance in the general fund. So just to review our employee-related long-term liabilities, 
We have a defined benefit pension that covers our firefighters. The most recent valuation was at the end of December 2023. Our current funded percentage is about 73% based on MERS's calculations. So we are required to make our annual required contribution each year is determined by MERS. And so that's included this year. It's about 18% of salary. Again, that's just for the firefighters. We also have retiring health care benefits that we do based on years of service. As of our most recent valuation, it was 120% funded. So um, obviously doing very well there. That is not smooth like MERS is smooth. So MERS works on a five-year smoothing. So market goes up, market goes down, they kind of pick a middle. Our OPEB actuarial does not do that. So if you can have a really great market year like we did and it gets to 120%, but if the market falls, it, it could go down under 100%. So it is a little bit more volatile than MERS, but still obviously in excellent shape. We're not required to make contributions to that plan except for, for employees hired after June of 2018. But that's and so, but we do make um, an annual contribution. We will still make our annual contribution despite being 100% funded because, again, the volatility could change that. Excuse me. This is a chart um, assessing provides for me each year, is showing the increasing gap. Um, between the taxable value and the assessed value. So as we all know, assessed value of homes has climbed considerably after the pandemic with the value of the decrease in housing stock. And taxable value is capped by the rate of inflation or 5%, which for the past two years has been the 5%. But you can see the considerable gap that continues to grow between housing values and our taxable value. This is also assessing graph on the taxable value change by property class. So you can see commercial property change, industrial, just kind of a nice summary of where the growth comes from. Personal property continues to decline, um, mostly because of the small parcel exemptions, which was expanded this year to go up to, I think it's $160,000 in property. So that you will see continuing to decline. Local operating millages, so this is updated um, through the most recent millages that people have published. So despite our two new millages, we still fall very low um, in the surrounding town, compared to the surrounding townships and cities. The, and you guys adopted the L4029 last week. Um, we were able to lower the share of substation dot millage. I think it was 9.8, now it's 9.2 or 0.92. So that should go down every year as the taxable value goes up. So that's um, nice to be able to do. General fund revenue summary, it's all pretty stable. Revenue sharing is supposed to go down a little bit. Um, that is dependent obviously on state um, sales tax receipts. Grant funding is high in 2025 when I was making the list um, that it did get a lot of parks projects that we received funding. The housing grant, because we're not really sure how much will get spent this year and how much will get spent next year. Um, and then the mall and then Elmwood grants, which may end up getting pushed a year. That project may get delayed a year, so we may be stripping that out on the final version of this, but that is a big chunk of the grant funding. Um, but yeah, other than that, pretty, pretty stable. The one thing I did point out in my memo was the Telecommunication Act, the cable fees. It's been interesting to watch those sort of dwindle over time as more people cut the cord. So we do receive that check um, quarterly, and it has started to really be noticeably declining. Uh, we just don't see the revenue from that that we used to. The expenditure summary, um, a few things you can point out. The clerk's office, we just had budgeted for one election. I mean, maybe we could do that. That would be nice to get a little bit of a break. But we figured we usually have one, so we included that. Um, IT is lower because the SNA cloud, um, we've, we're done with that, so to speak, at least paying for it. Um, accounting treasurer is higher because the St. Joe bond payment is in there now, um, so that is higher. Hall and grounds, we have money budgeted for paving the parking lot. Uh, which is 
was well needed. Police activity is higher because 11% increase in the sheriff's contract for next year. Um, fire, we have less capital expense. So that's why that's lower. Um, to address the drain, so I did use a $500,000 estimate. There's going to be substantial interest cost on a 30 year bond issue. So um, that's why I use the 500,000. I will be lucky if it's 500,000 in my opinion with the way that you know the design is progressing and all that. I, I think we'll be getting off light if it's 500,000. Rose activity is up because of the mall I have an Elmwood path that we have included and cemetery has a capital project. Troy, if I may, Madam Clerk, uh, on the um, the bank's drain. Uh, so is it the Eaton County Drain Office that issues the bonds? Yes. Okay. And we will be a party to that. So you know how when we did the Bel Air drain, we had right. to pass that resolution saying we would participate because we're a big chunk of the project. We'll have to do that again. But yes, they will be Eaton County drain bonds. And you mentioned the substantial interest yes. cost. Is that just open market interest in the bond sales or is that some other subsidized federal? It is. Account? They sell on the open market and they're not as, because I asked this question because I noticed the interest rates that drains were getting were nowhere near the 3% we're get, And I think there's not as much even though to me, the drain is one of the most stable things because they just put it on your taxes, right? I right. mean, they sell the bond, they put it on your taxes. But the drains aren't just as like well known in like the bond society. So they just, they don't get the interest rates that we get. Um, so it'll be in the five, six Real plus much. the, th yeah, yeah, it's considerably different. Yeah. Okay. So general fund, fund balance, this budget does call for using fund balance. Part of that will come from some money that we won't spend this year because we've delayed some projects. Um, a couple of the parks projects who we're just going to finish design, we're not going to finish construction, but it still leaves us with over eight months of um, fund balance. So not a, not a problem. We did budget to put that $500,000 into the restricted drain account we, that we already had. So it's adding to our restricted or assigned fund balance. It just kind of gives us a cushion um, if we end up running into a problem over the 30 years we're paying on this. So some of this I touched on. Um, so yeah, we'd be using about 2.9 million of fund balance. Like I said, that's a big number. It's all for capital projects. Um, part of it's that 500,000 that we would basically be putting aside for the bond, for the bank drain. And then we will have reserves at the end of this year that we would be using to offset that. But it meets all the board policies. Um, we did have the 3% cost of living for non-union and 3% is a part of our CBA for the fire department. So the healthcare cost increase is 18%. That is the healthcare cost increase. That's the huge driver, the life in the dental, and that is extremely minor. We did meet with our healthcare representative, and yes, he always does seek other proposals for other plans um, just to QAQC and try to have leverage on Blue Cross to see if there's anything else we can do. Not a lot of yeah, players in that market, unfortunately, um, priority PHP. But yes, they, they do seek out bids and the board will approve that um, probably in October, November. The Eaton County Sheriff contract does get paid out of the general fund and the public safety fund now because the public safety amendment which covers the cost of about, I forget what I said in the memo, but a certain percentage of that contract, 1.9 million of that contract is covered through the public safety millage. Beth, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. In light of this new drain assessment that we're going to have to start putting aside half a million dollars every year for for the next 30 years, it should we be considering perhaps postponing some of these parks projects, even though I know we're doing matching grant funds and we might lose some of the grant funding, but perhaps if we postpone some of them, we could save up the money and pay it later. So I included the $500,000. So when I do the budget, right, I think of operating expense and capital expense. Mm -hmm. The operating expense, the 500000 would be an operating expense to me because it's annual. It's not a one-time cost. Mm -hmm. So the 500000 is actually covered by our operating expense, our ongoing. It's not, we're not dipping into reserve to put that aside right okay. now. So 
but we are for the parks project. Correct. Because those are one-time projects. So you wouldn't want to use reserve for something that you were going to have ongoing. And right now we're not doing that. So the only thing that we're doing for, the only thing that we're using reserve for are capital projects. But not health and safety so much as just, you know, fun things and things we want to add and that sort of thing, but we're not. Oh, right. I mean, there's some fire department projects as well, but yeah. Well, right. Yeah. I'm saying parks and rec. Correct. That's, that's that where is the big a lot of stuff is. And parks, yes. Yeah. Correct. But that's not health and safety. That's not making sure that, that, you know, we're saving lives or anything like that. These are things that we want to add to the township, which of course we want to do, but perhaps we can't financially do right now. Right. That would be the but the purpose of our reserves is for this because you the right so you would use your reserve because you save up for things that you right yeah, yeah. that's how we have mm -hmm. so this is capital reserve not general fund reserve it's unrestricted general fund reserve above and beyond the amount that we need for that fifty percent of fund balance yeah when she said we were what you said we were at sixty some percent. Yeah, it's basically eight months, and the board okay. policy is six. Well, policy calls for six months, right? Mm -hmm. But right now, that's but right. that's the cushion right. that mm -hmm. we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, then, with the you know, this does take into account the new millage. So, I mean, at some point, yeah, it does get more difficult to do the capital projects because if you use the reserve and you don't replenish the reserve, then yes, right. I I think one of the things that. <laughs> Uh, kind of hurts in the budget is we're still dealing with the backlog uh, a queue all the way from COVID with some of our right. parks projects. So um, mm -hmm. many of these have already been deferred a year, two, mm -hmm. three. So uh, trying to clear those out of the deck yeah. and certainly um, moving forward, careful about applying for new grants or, or projects, but it would be ideal to try to get some of these done um, that we do have grant funding uh, waiting to mm -hmm. uh, be able to add those amenities. Yeah, and I was yeah. pleased to see in the CIP that you know perhaps we will have a slower year coming up in project wise. Right. Well, so the basically the big ones for next year, which I don't know where am I at here. I guess I'll get there in two slides, right? Mm -hmm. So this was a few things I already commented on. Oh, the fire department does have an increased um, position mm -hmm. to take the suppression staff. So we had budgeted two extra positions last year to deal with the retirements that were coming. And so we're just making those permanent and adding one to put 15 on a shift for 45 suppression personnel. Um, and then, so these are the capital projects that are included in that budget. So, you know, the Hunter's, Order, Hunter, Hunter's Orchard and the Sharp Park, I think those were 2019 grant projects. I mean, that, that had been, wow. yeah, it was so, had they been happening in sort of the order that we intended, it wouldn't be happening all at the same time. And, and just to remind, some of those <clears throat> really were held up by COVID because we waited Usually, once you get the grant, you still wait almost a year for a project grant agreement. I believe we waited almost two years for those, and then we dealt with the um, escalation of costs, mm -hmm. so another mm -hmm. issue to deal with, and the, and the manpower, and, and some of the projects, if you remember, we put out for bid, and did not get good bids, so yes. we're, we're back into now being able to accomplish a few of these projects, and as I say, hopefully clear the deck from some of these older grants, because mm -hmm. uh, we've prefer not to re re return them. We don't want to risk future mm -hmm. grants, uh, at least finish off uh, these these projects moving forward. So some of them we have been saving for five years for them, essentially. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I know. Right. That's, yeah. And like I said, we thought maybe we would get to them this year, but it just, you know, we just focused on the design this year. Yeah. But 50% of the operating budget is personnel related. I mean, personnel is, you know, your big cost driver, but it is good that we can still afford to do um, these projects. Um, some of the ties to the strategic goals, um, grant matching for Hunter's Orchard, Sharp Park, um, the Sharp Park Playground, which is partially funded by a county grant, and then the Webster Road Bridge design, which is also funded by a county grant in part, um, fireworks, recycling, parks and rec programs, continued non-motorized pathway maintenance, because again, you build it and then you do obviously have to keep maintaining it. Our publications remain the same, Delta Rocks all summer long, and then staff development, 
a lot of these overlap, right? So, um, and then continued infrastructure and upgrades. Yes. Just a question, Courtney, on the infrastructure for like the township hall. I know uh, as part of the strategic planning, we talked about a few years ago, there were things that needed to be done in this building. And so I didn't know if there's anything that's on the list that's an imperative that we address in the next budget cycle for, for, this, the building, for this building. The big thing is the parking lot paving. Um, it's a good time to do that because they'll be doing administrative drive. The area across the street will be all cleaned up. So that's the main thing um, for this building for next year. Okay. The east lot is especially bad. Yeah. Right. I know it's getting... Other township funds, public safety fund, formerly paramedic or ambulance fund, um, that stable budgeted revenue and expenditures were equal. Economic development capital projects, we basically will spend all but 250000 of our ARPA money this year. So the amount in the capital projects fund is kind of what it was originally before we put the ARPA in there. And the general debt fund is just the library bond debt. This is a review of what we spent ARPA funds on. So I think it's been a really great use, real nice mixture of different departments and different projects. It's a little bit different than um, because we didn't end up doing the Sharp Park and the Hunter's Orchard project. So shifted some of that into the Nixon Ring bike lane project just so we could get it spent this year. Um, Delta Mills restroom was a big piece of it. So, and two ambulances, we won't get one of the ambulances until 2025. Future projects to keep in mind, um, we still have the grant to pay Hawk Meadow Trail and then the big one and the big commitment the township has made because it's basically a once in a generation project is the Webster Road Bridge. Mm -hmm. So participating in the bridge project, participating um, with the trail, connecting Delta Mills to Hawk Meadow. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. So we do have a lot of grant applications out to cover a very good portion of that. We just haven't had confirmation yet. Is there any potential for state funding? It, 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 the grants are all oh, the state grants are state. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. I didn't know if they were. There. Yeah, so there's a transportation enhancement grant and then um, a trust fund grant, mm -hmm. both out Excellent. for that. So public safety fund again, not a lot of expenditures this year. We have our annual striker equipment lease payment that's annual for ten years and one ambulance, which we ordered in 2023 to, uh, you know, I lose track now, but um, that will be the last piece of apparatus that um, we're expecting. We expect the pumper tanker this fiscal year that we've been waiting on since 22. So the sewer fund, um, so yes, there is a large increase in the sewer fund. There, that's going to continue to be the increase until at least 2030. So instead of doing a large increase 25-30% back years ago, this was the option that we chose, which was the gradual increase. We have a very large bond payment. You can see it now. It hits in 2025. It keeps me up at night. $4.4 <laughs> million to that thing. We're slowly increasing our amount of we have to we're doing an 80 million dollar project and we have to pay for it there's there's just no way around it mm -hmm. so the 9.5 is kind of where we're landed that we're slowly increasing the revenue to cover it so we will use reserve to make this bond payment right. so that we can gradually increase and does this factor in ltm no right that's well put courtney too and we're like we're now we're what second or third year now of those increases um, it's been, yeah, 21, 22, 23, 23, yeah, it's right. been a while. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's good. It has to continue until we can make that bond payment without an issue. It's a 20 year bond issue. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the first payments in 25. And for the benefit of those in the audience, mm -hmm. that bond payment is the bond required to construct the new um, treatment plant. And that is driven many several years, years ago to go by the state by permit limits, right? By the yeah. state. And that was going to be my question, and kind of more for for the earlier question or comments that were made during the public comment period. Um, 
those fee increases were all part of that, I guess, Aid study. the, the rate study, study mm -hmm. that was done with the state for the SRF loan that was yeah, he committed to, to this in the yes. SRF process to get that bond issue correct. So with the like using an average water bill, right? So I use acting supervisor Clark still six hundred cubic feet, right? Mm -hmm. So the bill now would be forty three ten a month. It's going to be forty five fifty one. It's two dollars and forty two cents for the month. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I get that every little bit it's very difficult. I pay the water bill too, but unfortunate. I mean, we have low rates. We weren't starting from a Lansing level rate. Right. We were starting from our very low delta rates, which means that we we just we do have the room, unfortunately, to move it. And like I said, two dollars and forty two cents a month is not for an average user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but well, yeah, I did, was very careful about Altium because I know that there's some. I don't know exactly when that's going to come online, so this does not take into account um, any extraordinary new revenue from Altium. But to, to clarify that, it, let's assume Altium goes online as scheduled, and they, they start using the water, and that's coming through Delta Township. So, but they're yep. paying their own bill. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know well, they so, pay now, and mm -hmm. so it's we're getting our water from the Board of Water and Light, and so it's passing through this, uh, the. Um, townships infrastructure so they get the rates that uh, we set Correct. um we have set earlier for bit different yeah. types of businesses and things like that altium actually pays lansing rates for yeah. sewer yeah and then we keep our portion and yeah. remit the rest to lansing so they yeah. yeah they pay yeah a, yeah a lot even though it's in a renaissance zone so correct yeah but Corey, right. so with Altium, if they do come on, you know, if that does materialize and they're paying in, then going forward, that could help the township Correct. adjust that any future fee increases down some Correct. because that we'd have that revenue right as well. That's certainly the hope, but mm -hmm. hard to sure. Well, and I think at it's the important moment, to remember so. too that the rate is the rate based on your usage. So Correct. You know, a family of two is going to use less than a family of four is going to use less than a restaurant and that sort of thing. And so, you know, if you're, you're using too much, then maybe consider changing your habits. Yeah, we give the speech every day. <laughs> Brian, did you? Well, I was just going to back up just for the purposes of the public or to refresh memories, too, with the large wastewater plant or wharf. Um, there was really three things driving it. One, it was at the end of its life cycle. Uh, two, yep. we had reached 80% 80, 80 of our capacity, which the state then pushes you into a um, at least looking at redesign. And then the state also was uh, uh, pushing us into advanced water treatment standards um, so that uh, we still have a phase two for that project uh, that will be coming up once phase one is completed. So uh, there's a lot of factors that caused that big of a project. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting in into Rick's world, but enterprise funds, the sewer and the water are separate mm -hmm. from general funds. Right. Mm -hmm. They have to fund themselves. Right. Yep. So and you can see we have very limited capital that we're doing in the meantime. Um, we have to upgrade our scale, which is the notification system for problems that's being done as part of the wastewater project or was spurred as part of the wastewater project. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to keep, you know, the other capital to, you know, what we need to do. Um, same with water. So we have the same jump bond payment, 3%. We have only done 1.25 and 2% increases in this because of the higher sewer rate increases. But with the board of water and lights increases being 9%, we, we can't fall behind and get ourselves in trouble. So, again, pretty limited capital here and um, a lot of, you know, painting the ground storage tanks, maintenance items. Um, but we have to keep up with, you know, a lot of our cost on this is the Board of Water and Light. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just like to say it about the water and the water treatment plan wastewater recovery facility. Sorry. <laughs> we're lucky in this community to be able to have these advances, to be able to plan these things out that our utilities department and our engineering department have been looking forward on these things to make sure that we are treating our wastewater and not dumping 
any kind of environmental contamination into the rivers around here or into our water table. And so, you know, it's one of the things that it's money well spent. Clearly. Well, it's under a very watchful eye of a uh, hurricane utilities mm -hmm. tractor. Mm -hmm. yeah, attached to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the last slide. So is there any questions or anything else? I can um, just a couple of questions, easy mm -hmm. ones. Um, going over, there was a chart about um, the expenses and the percentage of increase or de decrease. Mm -hmm. Two things, the cemetery activity mm -hmm. looks like it's going up 32%. Can you give us kind of sure. an idea of what's going on? There? Yep, that's a capital project we had actually budgeted for this year, but we were just in the design. So that's at the Delta Center Cemetery. So if you go by there, the fence is not holding very It needs a, a second entrance. So that's a capital project at the cemetery. And then the other thing, and it came up from during public comment, and you spoke a little bit about it, was mm -hmm. health insurance. And mm -hmm. I know that health insurance is cyclical. You, you know, there's a five year cycle, you make a couple of good years, and couple of a uh, few years where it's bad. So mm -hmm. is that typically, is that what's going on here that's driving up that cost? 18%. Yeah, so 2022, we had a very low increase of like one or 2%. Well, I always don't like that very much because then I know the next year, right, is going to be high. So, and that was true in 2024, it was high. In 2025, unfortunately, it's going to be high again. What drives that in our case? Utilization. So we're a big, we're a large group, but we're a small, large group. So we might have four people that have fairly catastrophic things that happen to them and it drives up the rate. And it's it's very hard to, I mean, pers between prescription drugs and then actually um, hospital stays, surgeries, those sorts of things, it's, it's really driven by utilization. And that's just kind of the way, you know, yeah. the way that it goes. So they give us a very large, we actually met with Blue Cross this year for the first time because we have over 200 lives covered. And so they were able to explain you know, some of the trends and things that we're seeing, but, um, but yeah, it is kind of unusual to have sort of the double year, but of the higher increases, but we did have a utilization that was heavy this year. Thank you. Yeah. Good. We're Good fortunate work. to have an agent that is very proactive and said seeking out other quotes. So Andrew. Cool. Excuse me, Courtney. Um, you know, we've been really fortunate. I think one to be in a strong financial position for many, many years and be able to save up and pay for a lot of improvements and, and projects that we've wanted to do. And then I know, you know, there were a number of federal kind of COVID era resources that came our way. I think we've capitalized on that opportunity, making really um, valuable one-time investments with those with equipment and, and other improvements. And we're, we're still in a strong position, but are there any things, is anything that you're thinking about kind of looking forward, any causes of concern, challenges that, you know, might present in the yeah, you know, I think not so distant future that we need to be cognizant of budget wise? Yeah, to me, the bank drain was the big one. And that's why I just wanted to kind of get it out there because I didn't want to budget operating without it because it's going to hit next year. So and I mean, I don't think there's anything stopping it at this point. So that to me was a, a really large one. And then I mean, I think what Trustee Bowen was talking about, too, is that a lot of our millage money is going towards operating expense. It doesn't leave a lot. I think it was about maybe 700,000 that was left over for capital in this budget. So that's where it will be more difficult to raise money for these projects. Okay. And we'll just have to be selective about the priorities of the projects, mm -hmm. which I think we have, like I said, I mean, with the Webster Road Bridge, what are you going to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to do it and having the reserve. So it's, it's not to say we don't have additional reserve unrestricted or restricted reserve. And that's why we have that is so that you can capitalize on that because you wouldn't want a project like that to come along and say, well, we can't help and you can't put the path because we don't have the money, right? So that's why it's important to have those reserves. Um, but I think those, you know, would probably be the, the largest things. But I mean, I think, you know, the healthcare cost is another, that is a big concern. I mean, for a family plan under, with the new rates, it's over $30,000 a year. So when you multiply that times how many employees you have with families, that's including our HSA contribution, you know, the whole boat. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. 
you know, if you have somebody making $60,000 a year and that's a $30,000 a year benefit. Thank you for highlighting those issues. Yeah. <clears throat> Beth. Um, you made a point in your uh, memo to point out that we spent a lot of money on conferences last year, the board did. And this is not a, a consideration for you, but perhaps for us going forward, maybe we should um, think about a new policy for who goes where, when, you know, and, and that sort of thing to cut some of those expenses. I know $17,000 is a drop in our overall budget, but just to be responsible with the money that we are spending on behalf of the township. I, I would very much like for the board to have a discussion and consider um, what the city of Lansing does, which is each elected person has a line item amount. And we have to remember all the things that we do. If you make, if you say you're gonna go to the chamber dinner and you don't go, we bought that ticket. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. and so the way the city does, if you wanna attend, mm -hmm. you have your line item. And when your line item is gone, your line item is gone. Um, because this training per se comes differently, but this is not, this is not training. Right. This is for the most part, networking. exposure and networking. Yeah. And mm -hmm. not that it's not, not that you don't walk away learning things because you certainly do, but it's not, a, it's not for a certification mm -hmm. or things that it's very important that our staff get their training budget because they have to maintain their certifications. And it was so many years that it really wasn't an issue, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of come back after what, three years of COVID when people right. weren't really, right. there it, was nothing in person. And right. so. proportionally, it kind of exploded last year. Yeah. And part so, of that was a township of excellence. You know, there was a, you know, right. so a lot of times there is, you know, a, mm -hmm. it's not saying it's not a good reason. It's just understanding what the board wants to do there. But I would add, I, I, I think it's always good to look at our expenses and what we do, but I don't want to undermine the value of the training that's out there so that we can continue to um, benchmark off of other cities and what they're doing and bring great lessons back to the table. So I think that's what we've been doing, but it's always good to look at how we're spending but and, that's, and, it's, it's, and what yeah. that places on the budget. It's still it's, in the budget. It's just how is it going to be allocated? Yeah. Right. Well, and we can have that discussion. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Um, any other questions for Courtney? I think we kind of asked as we went no, along. No, no. And then, Courtney, the plan for the timeline for the budget, if you could share that. So typically how it's worked um, is that next meeting, we would set the public hearing for a meeting in October and then have the public hearing and the board can either vote to adopt the budget at that meeting or at a future meeting. It just has to be done you know, by the end of the year. But we typically do it at the latest by the first meeting in November. Right. Just so that it's set. Any other? Beth, did you have anything? No, I couldn't talk to you. Just thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Court. <clears throat> so moving on on the agenda, um, I will entertain a motion um, to go into closed session at the request of Township Manager under the Open Meetings Act. Um, and the whole MCL is there to consider uh, attorney client privileged communications. So, so move. Move. support. <laughs> and All right. would you please call roll? Yeah. Trustee Bowen. Yes. Trustee Cascarello. Yes. Trustee Brewer. Yes. Trustee Mojica. Yes. Trustee Fito is a yes. Uh, Madam Clerk Clark. Yes. You have six votes. Okay. Um, we will go into closed session as usual, plus the call and B, and we will um, be back then. It may take a while. Oh. Oh, 
Big old. How much? Your, your, your uh, amount of what you have for the maximum value is thirty six percent. I asked ten what it is for this last year. Yeah, it's forty percent. How do you get forty percent? Well, it's here's the yeah. total SMB. This is the bill. We are back session. in session at 8.09 p.m. The board has sought legal counsel and is awaiting additional legal clarification at the next regularly scheduled board meeting. Discussion on the appointment will be on the agenda. With that, the manager's report, please. All right. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple things just really quick. If you get a chance to drive out there, Nixon Road is uh, pretty well complete between Mount Hope and St. Joe. They do not have the bike lane markings, um, but the rest of the pavement markings are on there. So it looks nice. Um, something I put in my manager's minute, I believe last week, but just wanted to call out and really commend our assessing department um, because they just received their uh, audit was required by Public Act 660 of 2018. Um, and uh, receive perfect audit findings, uh, so which is pretty great. rare. So a great, great job by um, Ted Drosty and Brian Thalen and Jill Pauly, uh, our, our three folks in the assessing office. Brian, I'm just curious, who does the audit? Uh, is it re, the state re, treasurer? Or? Uh, it's the okay. state tax commission, okay. but they had to actually had reason consulting um, completed okay. the audit That's on important. behalf of the state tax commission. Okay, but it's a state audit. That's what Correct. I was curious. Okay, yes. thanks. Um, and then uh, at last meeting, we had some public comment regarding the short-term rental on Wardell Road. So we do plan to bring that back at a future right. meeting, so... And that's uh, it, but I'm happy to answer any questions. That, well, can I just bring up, and I know you had it in your um, uh, manager's well, news report that went out, but I didn't know if I missed it before. 
and I may have, and I apologize, but I know um, the chief's kind of farewell retirement party is this. Oh, this Friday, Friday right? Yep. Yeah, and from I, three to five. Said that, but I, for here. whatever reason, didn't have it on the calendar, but I caught that in the newsletter, and so I was mm -hmm. uh, yeah. put that on there. But I didn't know if others missed that too. No, I, I saw just it. wanted to bring uh, it up because I will be back back on Island. Oh, coming back. Coming so. back. I saw that today. Yeah, it, it was yeah, uh, kind of planned by the department. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but it'll be at station one. Yeah. If you do happen to get back, I'm to do. Okay. Anything else? I'll be there. I'll represent board. I'll try to go by before then. I can. Well. Yeah, is he back? No, is he still on vacation? I, I think he's still on vacation until later this week. Um, any um, vacationing into retirement? Additional comments? Yeah. Dennis? Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> and, you know, the board members are aware uh, we all received a an email uh, maligning a board member. Uh, it was a um, untraceable email uh, from a uh, encrypted um, a source and it had a domain name of ME, which is from Macedonia. Um, and the encryption is from Proton, which even on their own website, they use an example email of using the same domain name of Macedonia. Um, this is the second time that the board has received, to my knowledge, um, uh, untraceable uh, emails uh, maligning the board member. So I attribute uh, the fact that we can recognize this to Dave Marquette's uh, training that we have in identifying malicious emails. Um, I think this is uh, basically a foreign actor and that's doing this. But my question to Brian, I don't expect an answer necessarily tonight, but isn't there a way that our firewall can uh, block these type of emails you know, from encrypted sites? Can you check that out? Mm -hmm. Okay, that'd be good. So I'd appreciate that. So we don't have to be subjected to these types of emails in the future. I know we have hundreds of thousands that are blocked on a daily basis. So uh, whatever the logarithm uh, can be uh, adjusted, you know, to include encrypted websites because if they're sent through that means, it's obviously it's uh, they have malicious intent and they're not uh, there to, to, to produce a positive um, input at all. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can I ask a question on that? And I apologize. This is just kind of showing a little bit of my ignorance on the technical side. Um, is there any circumstance where there might be a legitimate email from an encrypted site? I mean. Some people choose to use encrypted. I don't want to just assume that. And some people do for protections from other. I, and I don't, I, I just want to be clear on that so we don't have a broad policy. If I, and I, understand if I can respond, if you're using an encrypted site, it's so you can't be traced. Okay. So you may use another person's name. You may, in this case, this was a, a yeah. former attorney of yeah. a yeah, yeah, yeah. personality that we know. Yes. Uh, but, um, Who's in federal prison, by the way? Yeah. So, so my point is, that if they're using an encrypted use. site for an email, it's because they don't want to be tracked. And if we have, it's like in an anonymous letter, okay? And, you, you know, we can't make policy decisions on anonymous input. I understand that, but there may be someone, and, and going email aside and encrypted websites aside, there are times where we could receive communications anonymously because a person is aware of something but doesn't want to bring it up. And I'm saying, and, and I don't know if we should carp watch say we never consider. And I think we had a little bit of discussion about um, some anonymous letters and whether or not that warrants discussion. And mm -hmm. I think we need to evaluate that. My only concern was, do we take a position that, I, and the only reason I ask, I know there are people that are very legitimate reasons use Slack um, and things, that, you know, for communications that are in there encrypted. And it's not anything malicious. It's not criminal. It is just a protected 
form of electronic communication. So that's why I was asking. I'm not saying anything particular about uh, this correspondence that was sent, but I I am just questioning, is there a reason? And, and there may not be. I just, I don't know. I'm not a well, we can have person. A discussion on that from a policy point of view, but yeah. I, I just appreciate like Dave's thoughts on that. Like, is there a reason that might not? Like, is also, there any legitimate? Then I would also ask, you know, what is the other criteria that are used uh, to um, firewall every other uh, sure. malicious uh, type of, you know, phishing type of um, emails that we get by the tens of thousands every day? Yeah. So, so you know, uh, this this could be just one of those types of things that. Fair enough. Isn't there? So, but we are already use criteria to firewall these other ones, you know, many numerous, you know, uh, on a daily basis. So, um, and those are, I don't think anybody would argue that they're basically malicious in nature. So. Okay. We're good. Anybody else? Oh, yes. We are adjourned. <laughs>